Welcome back guys. Uh, in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the penicillin synthesis and the production of penicillin. Okay, and we majorly talk about, uh, actually this is a three video series and in this all three videos we'll be talking about how penicillin is synthesized biosynthetically and what is the biochemistry of penicillin synthesis. Then we talk about uh, how we can use microorganisms to produce penicillin in industrial scale. Okay, so in this video I'm going to focus on uh, the biosynthesis pathway of penicillin that is the biochemistry behind the penicillin synthesis. And for understanding that you must know penicillin always uh, for the productivity of penicillin what we require we always require require uh, the presence of certain microorganism because this is a type of antibiotic which is probably uh, not probably this is the first type of antibiotic that was discovered by Alexander Fleming and his students so uh, that uh, from that time uh, penicillin was the actual and only one antibiotic to treat many different gram positive uh, bacterial infections so first of all so let me talk about so let, let, let me write so we'll be talking about here the penicillin Uh, biosynthesis okay and in this case uh, we'll be talking about uh, majorly the uh, biochemistry okay so let's begin so first of all at very beginning uh, they started to produce penicillin using uh, the bacteria called uh, so not actually bacteria penicillin was actually produced from uh, for a mold which is aspergillus or penicillium so the type of mold aspergillus or penicillin they are simply called as molds so from that molds they produce the penicillin and the first type of mold from which uh, Alexander Fleming uh, get the penicillin and that is uh, penicillium penicillium notatum so this is the strain from where they get the first type of penicillin but on the future times that is modified and nowadays we are majorly focused on penicillin produced from in industrial scale we produce it from penicillium chrysogenum so that's a completely different type it is penicillium chrysogenum so nowadays we won't rely on penicillium notatum because it's uh, the wild type it's not that good because remember in industrial production we always want to get some kind of variety or some type of species which can give us much more yield and less cost right so for that reason we shift towards the penicillium chrysogenum uh, nowadays for the production of penicillin industrially so let's talk about how penicillin is produced biosynthetically because penicillin is an antibiotic and any kind of antibiotic production which are simply called as secondary metabolites so let me write what are antibiotics they are simply termed as secondary secondary metabolites so in any case the secondary metabolites are generally produced at the stationary phase or at the late log phase late log or stationary phase of the life cycle of the bacteria or fungi okay now in this case I uh, produce it from uh, the molds and it is normally produced at the late log phase of their life cycle or of their growth okay so during this process of late log phase of their productivity uh, the major precursor for the production of uh, this type of uh, antibiotic is the alpha AAA or it is called as alpha amino adapic acid so let me write the precursor for the production is alpha amino alpha amino adipic acid this is the precursor molecule it is also called as alpha AAA amino adipic acid okay so this is the precursor now during this condition if we write it as L alpha amino adipic acid then what we do after we get this precursor we, we simply add two important amino acids to this alpha amino adipic acid and adding two important amino acids which is called cysteine and valine both of this amino acid addition with alpha amino adipic acid will convert this alpha amino adipic acid into a typical uh, ring like structure which is called the thiazolidin ring which is the typical characteristic of any kind of beta lactam antibiotics and that is also called as a beta lactam ring right so the first stage here is to add L cysteine 
So we will add L16 here. After adding L16, this alpha AAA will be converted. So, so let me write uh, let me write alpha AAA along with that L16 is now added. Now the second stage of this process, <coughs> sorry, is the addition of L valine, which is another amino acid. Now finally, after the addition of L valine, now it will be L alpha AAA with L cysteine plus L valine. So this is the combination. And once the L valine and L cysteine is combined, this, this dipeptide is combined with the alpha AAA, it starts to form that ring. And finally, after further two different stages, so two stage process is there. I'm not going to write those chemical stages and actual structures. I'm just presenting it schematically. After these two stages, it will be converted and it will be converted into that particular thiazolidine structure and we'll get the penicillin, including the beta lactam ring. That's how we generally produce penicillin biochemically or biosynthetic production, right? That's the process. Now some important aspects of this process, definitely in any biochemical pathway, there are controls. Now like that, this pathway is also controlled by several important factors. Now two such factors are, one is lysine, another one is glucose. So lysine is important here. The concentration of lysine and also the concentration of glucose this play a vital role. Now, if there is a lot of lysine there, it is going to inhibit the production of penicillin. So lysine is going to inhibit the production of penicillin. It's a negative regulation by the lysine. Why? Because normally the amino acid lysine is synthesized from a pathway that involves this L-alpha amino adipic acid. And also uh, this lysine inhibits an enzyme the enzyme called homocitrate synthase and that is required during the production of this penicillin because in this whole process I haven't write any name of the enzymes to, to uh, make it simplified right so that's why uh, normally the enzyme called homocysteine synthase that's very very important enzyme during the production of penicillin lysine is a feedback inhibitor for that enzyme it inhibits homos it inhibits homocitrate Sorry, it should be uh, I. Yeah. Homocitrate synthase inhibits homocytate synthase. As it is inhibiting homocytate synthase, which is an important enzyme during the formation of penicillin, it blocks the penicillin synthesis. Okay. And also, uh, the glucose can also inhibit this process because it, it, it is linked with the catabolite repression catabolite repression right because if there are a lot of glucose outside and everything is fine that bacteria may not uh, want to produce further penicillin there so if glucose is present for a longer period of time it will be taken up pretty firmly by the bacteria and the bacterial growth will be very 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 fast and during those process penicillin production will be halted because the penicillin and all these secondary metabolites usually produced once the growth of bacteria kinds of levels down during the stationary phase right now in this case also in case of mold growth also th this thing is proper okay so that's why the presence of glucose is not uh, considered as a good symbol so for the productivity of penicillin we never put glucose as a sole carbon source we put m uh, another uh, different sugar like lactose in that case instead of glucose because lactose though it's a kind of uh, sugar but it is a slow metabolizable sugar so that's why you put lactose instead of glucose during the production as a carbon source during the production of penicillin Okay, so that's about the biosynthetic pathway of penicillin production and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.